What's up, guys? It's Ricky Carruth. I'm at my office here at Remax in Orange Beach, Alabama. Um, the reason I'm going live today is because I made a post on a, a real estate agent group yesterday, and I had so many people uh, respond to it. Um, wanting some advice and stuff like that, that uh, I decided to just go Facebook Live for everybody. And that way I can kind of tell everybody how I do what I do, and then they can answer questions. I, they can ask questions, I can answer them. That way I can get to everybody, because it was too many people to get to everybody one by one. So I'm going to read the post to you so you know what uh, what I said. Um, I said, hey guys, I've sold over 100 properties this year for the last three years. I'm looking for agents who sell more than me to help me take it to the next level, as well as help agents who do not sell 100 properties get to the level I am. Let's brainstorm. All right? So, um, after I did that post, let's see, there was a good 25 to 30 people who uh, who responded to it? So, um, you know, I, I didn't believe my eyes. I was looking for actually some people that might even um, be at a higher level than me to help me uh, go to a, go to a higher level. But ended up a lot of people that um, you know. Evidently, there's a big need for for um, knowledge for agents just to know what to do in real estate. So while I'm waiting on some of the people that, that, uh, that wanted me to go live to kind of give them some advice and stuff like that, um, I'm going to go ahead and let you know where I'm at. I'm right here. Uh, this is kind of, this is our conference room of my office. And uh, this is where I make my calls. Um, I got a couple other guys in here with me. Um, they're just pounding the phones. I got my, uh, I got my little setup right here. Flip this sucker around. Uh, you know, I got my comps so that I can talk about comps whenever uh, people uh, ask me about the market and stuff or particular building I'm calling. Here's my phone numbers. Here's the notes I'm taking. Um, here's my phone script that I'm using. I set my Bluetooth down for this video. Okay, and then I got my computer. Right? Got coffee, water. I'm all up in here. I got Scott Myrick, Chris Vale. We're right here on the beach, guys. These windows look right out to the beach. So it, it's been rainy and kind of uh, cloudy today. But we're living in the middle of paradise. So anyway, um, just to kind of tell you where my business is right now. Um, for the last three years, I've closed over 100 properties per year. Okay, and like I said, guys, this is for the people that responded to the to the post yesterday. Um, I, I'm waiting on questions, so I want to answer all you guys' questions. Um, if if you read if you listen to this thing after it's live and you have a question, just just message me, or call me, or email me, uh, or whatever. Right. So anyway. I've sold 100 properties a year for the last three years, okay? Um, I've been doing this for 15 years, so it doesn't happen overnight. But let's just talk about 2017 for a second. So far this year, I've closed eight units for 2.7 million. Um, I've got 13 units under contract for 4.5 million under contract, and I'm negotiating seven deals right now. Um, so that's kind of where I am right this second. I'm already, I'm already getting a couple questions here. So Scott asked me uh, what percentage is buyers versus sellers. That's a good question. Um, my sellers are 80% of my business and uh, buyers are 20%. Okay, the, uh, the buyers I get, I focus all my efforts on listings. And the buyers that I get actually come from those efforts. I don't get internet leads um, and, and stuff of like that. There we go. Bad service. 
Anyway, um, I've built my business around phone calls. Okay, um, and that answers the next question I see. What's your number one lead generation tool? Um, it's phone calls, guys. Okay, I pound the phones. I'm going to get back to that in just a second. Uh, I've got some more questions here. How do you manage the volume and still provide good service? That's a good question as well. And, and really, it comes down to um, how good of a multitasker are you? Can you handle a lot at once? Because everybody has the point where they can only handle so much. And you have to find out where that maximum point is for you because it's different for everybody. And, and you have to get there as quick as you can and then stay there, right? You have to stay at a point where you can comfortably manage it, okay? And that's something per person. Everybody can't handle the same amount of volume. So I'm fortunate enough where I can handle, you know, a whole lot naturally. Um, so, and that, that's one thing that um, is a big part of my success is just how much I can handle at once. So a lot of you guys may or may not be able to do that, but until you max out what, what you can handle at once, you're not going to find out. Um, but I do, I do provide great service. You can go on my website, rickycaruth.com, and go to the testimonial page and um, see over the years you know, some testimonials of some of my clients and stuff that they've said about me. But I very, very rarely get anybody that is unhappy. And it's kind of one of those things you can't make everybody happy, but you do your best. So with it being a people business, um, I'm only focused around helping people. I'm not focused around the commissions. So, you know, my main goal is to help somebody and help as many people as I can and not worry about the money. And that puts you in a different mindset where you are more worried about them than you are the money and you end up giving better service. Uh, let's see, Noel says, Ricky, you're by yourself, any assistance um, helping you? Uh, I have an assistant, one assistant. It's just me, I'm a single agent, and I have one assistant. So my assistant is a beast, um, Christy Strickland. She's, uh, she's an animal, um, she handles a lot. And, uh, you know, sometimes she has her days where she's overwhelmed, but we make it happen. And, um, you know, our, our clients are really happy with how we handle everything. And that's the main thing. Okay, what's my main source of getting listings? It's calling the owners. I just cold call owners. Um, I call them up and, uh, you know, maybe I'll go over a little phone script here later on after I answer all these questions. But, uh. You know, I go directly to the source. I go directly to the source of listings, which is owners of the property that we want to sell. So we, uh, you know, if, if you want to sell property in a certain neighborhood, certain condos on certain road, call all the owners that own that property. That's, that's the fastest way to get as many listings as you can get. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Let's see, let's see. Do you farm a specific area, neighborhood? Um, do you do mail outs? I do, I do farm. I have about 2,500 uh, owners that I farm that I've been farming for a long time. Um, you know, this is just, this video is, is just about me and what my opinions are and how I see it. Um, and everybody has different opinions. But for me, the farming and the mail outs and all that, to me, that's just you building your brand. That's you building your name, okay? And, and then later when you make your phone calls and you call those people, they know who you are, right? Um, to me, the, uh, the mail outs and everything are so important, but too many agents, uh, they use it as a crutch. They, they try to, they, they kind of lie to themselves and say that, you know, this is what's gonna get them deals. The, the mail outs do not get the deals. The phone calls get the deals. Let's see what we got. How long did it take you to get to 100 deals? Uh, was it a gradual increase or huge leaf? Okay, it was a, uh, let me read the questions to you guys here. How long did it take to get to 100 deals a year? Uh, was it gradual increase or a huge leap? The, uh, I'll tell you, I'll give you a little background. 
Um, I started in 2002. All right, so I got in right before the bubble started building. All right, and before the market crashed, so I was involved in, in a little bit of that market when it was really hot. You know, we would we would get a listing; it was selling a day for a hundred thousand more than the one just sold for next door. So, you know, we rode. I rode that wave, and that was kind of my introduction to real estate. When the market crashed, I didn't know what to do. So, when it crashed, I crashed basically. And I didn't sell anything for a couple of years. Um, in 2008, I, I got back in kind of full time and um, I started selling foreclosures to buyers. Um, and, and that kind of catapulted me back into real estate. Okay. And then I learned the lessons from when the market crashed. You know, the lessons I learned from when the market crashed is what has put me in the position that I'm in right now. And that is. I would, when the market was crazy hot, I would, I would call owners, I would get a listing, you know, because it's not hard to find somebody that wants to make $100,000 the next day. So I'd get the listing, we'd sell in a day, and then I would never talk to that person again, right? And then there was no relationship built. So when the market crashed, I had no relationships with clients to fall back on. Well, I learned that lesson through the crash and when the market started coming back, um, I applied that those lessons learned to, uh, to to the current market where every deal I do now and have since 2008 is a relationship building platform where every deal I do, I'm creating a relationship that I want to last forever. Right. And so. When the, when the deals, uh, you know, let's say 2008, I think I sold 20 deals when I got back in. Okay, um, 2009 and 10, I think I probably got up to maybe 40 or 50. 2011 and 12, I was, I was probably still around the 50, 60 mark. Um, you know, I think I hit maybe 80, 2013, and then 2014, I hit 100. I've hit 100 ever since. And when I say 100, I hit like 102 one year, 103 one year, 107 one year. So it's all been between 100 and 110. Okay, Scott says, what time do you call during the day? Um, it doesn't matter. Because I'll be real honest with you, man. It doesn't matter what time you call. You just pick up the phone and start calling. Just bing, bing, bing. You just start calling them one after another. You don't pre-qualify them. You don't think, uh, are they at lunch? Are they home? Am I going to catch them? You, you just go. You, you call. You want to call 40 or 50. If you're trying to take your business to another level, um, if you feel like you're in a holding pattern, um, if you feel like you, um, if you're just starting and trying to, you want to go and you just want to be one of the best realtors in your area, you have to be making around 50 calls a day every day. Um, there's no way around it if you want to really build your business. Um, but no, there's there's not a certain day during the call. Whenever the days I make calls, I start making calls at 9 o'clock. And uh, I make them as long as I can make them. What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean there's definitely times when people answer the phone more. Uh, Scott just said more people answer on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, that, that may or may not be true. But I'm not sitting here trying to time them, time them out to see when I think they're going to answer it. I'm making the calls. I'm leaving messages, and I'll keep trying to call them, and I'll call them again next week if I have to until I get them. Let's see. The owners, are they expired or just cold leads uh, that you convenience to sell? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I don't do it. If, if I wasn't so busy, I would love to do expireds because – and for sale by owners, um, because those are that's like taking candy from a baby. That's somebody that wanted to sell that doesn't have an agent anymore. And chances are, if you can prove to them that you're going to stay in touch with them, unlike the last agent they had, then you're in the game, right? And how you do that is you call them up, you say, hey, do you still want to sell? You go meet with them, and then you try to list them right there, but if you don't want to pressure them, so if, if you don't get it right then, you just keep calling them every like twice a week until they give it to you. They're going to see you're consistent. They're going to see you're going to stay in touch with them. They're going to give it to you. But 
No, all of mine are cold because I'm targeting certain uh, certain types of properties. So it's all cold for me. Um, I wish I did have time to do expireds. Yeah, I do use an auto dial company. Uh, Noel asked me if I use an auto dial company. Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, just depending on the situation. Um, auto dialers are great because you can make so many calls at once. I think my connection is getting a little bad, guys. Let me move around and see if y'all can. Okay. I'm just going to sit right here. Yeah, auto dialers are good. Uh, I, I use one mm, maybe 20% of the time because I have so many people in my phone. I just call them right off my phone or um, I have a list and I just, it, sometimes for whatever reason I do and don't, but auto dialers are great and you can make tons of calls with them. Okay, Scott asked me, how do I stay in touch with past clients? What's your favorite CRM? Okay. Um, I'll be honest with you here. What I do is I make calls, uh, all the calls I've made over my career, and, and I, I become their agent, right? I get them to commit to me as saying that they're going to use me whenever they decide to do something, right? And then they give me their email address, okay? And then I send a weekly report about the market. If any of you guys want to get on my weekly report to see what I'm sending, just send me an email or a Facebook message or something and say, hey, here's my email address. Put me on that report so I can see what you're sending out. Um, maybe that'll help you. But I send every Wednesday a weekly report about the market. And, uh, um, and I do that through constant contacts. Um, so I put all my email addresses in constant contacts. I send that weekly report out so everybody gets a report um, every week. Okay, and then as far as like, if, if I have somebody I need to follow up with, I have a book, right? I have a schedule book, and I put it in that book. If I, if it, if I need to follow up with them next week, the week after, I, I put it in that book so that when I flip to that page, I know I need to call that person. I'm kind of old school with it. I'm not real organized when it comes to, uh, to, the, to the organization of your database and all the follow-up stuff. I'm not real good at that part, right? But I'm good at uh, uh, contacting tons of people connecting with them and, and I'm genuinely want to help them achieve their goals with buying or selling real estate and so that's why I do so well uh, let's see where do you get your phone number slash contact info Peter says okay so yeah there's a lot of local agents watching it fine so anyway guys um, where do I get the phone numbers and contact information from? This is where the hustle comes in. Okay? You, uh, what you want to do... All right. What you want to do is Google how do you find phone numbers. Right? All these websites pop up. Um, there's plenty of them. All right? So what you do, wherever your area is, that you, uh, whatever system you guys use for like the county... Um, Property, uh, property owners information, use that, find their uh, name, address, you know, all that information and use that where, where they live to find their phone numbers. Okay, there, it's a lot of work to that. But, but here's, here's the thing about that. If you really want this bad enough, then you're going to put in the work it takes to find the phone numbers and make the calls. Uh, what I did when I first started out was... Uh, all day I would make calls and then at night is when I would do all my emails and look up all my phone numbers for the next day. I would spend all night trying to find phone numbers and sending emails out and then I would call all day. I'd make 50 to 100 calls every day. I did it every day for a long time to get my career, my business built to the level it is. Now, I probably do 50 calls, maybe two or three days a week. Let's see here. How do you get your expired for sale by owners? What dialer do you use and to get the leads? Okay. Um, for sale by owners, just go to forsaleboundor.com. 
Go to ForSaleBounder.com and look up all the For Sale Bounders in your area. Drive around. You can see all the signs. Look, Find their information there. The uh, the expireds, that's in your MLS. We you know, look on there every day, see that they expired, click on there, get their address, and then use that reverse search to find their phone number. Let's see here what we got. Some more questions. Okay, I don't see any more questions right this second. All right, so this is what I'm going to do until I get another question. I'm just going to kind of give you guys an idea of what I tell people on the phone, okay? All right, so real quick, I'm just going to give you guys a spill of how I do it on the phone, and then if there's any more questions, I'll be glad to take them. Um, all right, so the phone rings. Ring, ring, ring. Somebody answers. Hello? I'm also, I'm always going to say, Mr. Carruth, I'm always going to say, Mr. Carruth, you know, use the last name and do it like a question. Okay, you're asking if this is Mr. Carruth, but you're not saying this is Mr. Carruth. Um, so I'm going to say, Mr. Carruth, they're going to say, yeah. I'm going to say, hey, Mr. Carruth, this is Ricky Carruth down at Remax of Barnes Beach. How are you doing today? Right? And then I'm going to pause. Okay, they're going to say, yeah, we're doing good or whatever. I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, I'm doing good too. I'm just enjoying this good weather we got going on. Isn't it gorgeous today? Right? So what I do is, is I, I call them up. I make sure I'm talking to the right person. And then I, I immediately ask how they're doing and then start talking about the weather. Whatever the weather's doing today. Um, like today on the beach, it's, it's like foggy and cloudy and rainy. So that's what I would say. However... Whatever the weather's doing, I'm going to adjust my phone script to that, okay, so it's real, okay? And you'd be surprised the people that start talking to you about the weather. Um, you know, it, you'll go back and forth with them about the weather, and it's a great icebreaker, right? So people love it. <clears throat> so I start talking about the weather, and then when that, when that comes to a, an end, I say, Hey, look, Mr. Carruth, I'm not trying to take up too much of your time, but, and then I go right into the reason for my call. So say I'm calling to tell them that, uh, that I just listed a house in their neighborhood, right? I would say, oh yeah, that sounds good, Mr. Carruth. Well, look, I'm not trying to take up too much of your time today, but I just listed a house right down the road from you, and I just want to see if there's anything I can do for you, Right? So, you know, most of the time they're going to say that there's nothing that you can do for them at the time, right? You can, you can try to say, hey, do you guys want to sell? You know, do you want to buy anything? Whatever, whatever. You know, sometimes you'll run up on a deal, somebody wants to do something, and you can turn that into a deal right then. But most of the time people are going to say, no, nah, we're not looking to do anything, or we're not interested right now. Okay, that's when you drop a bomb on them. That's when you say, well, look, is there an agent down here in the area that you work with? Okay. You're going to ask them point blank, is there an agent that they work with? Right? So that's going to solidify if they have an agent that they already have a great relationship with. Because if they have an agent that they have a great relationship with already, then you may be wasting your time. Even if they like you and like who you are. They're not going to use you because they already have this awesome relationship with their mom's brother, his cousin, or, you know, somebody at the church or something like that. You know, and you can go ahead and scratch that person off your list. But most of the time they're going to say, no, we don't have an agent or we, you know, we talked to some, but, you know, we're not really married to any of them. And that's when you say, well, look, there's going to come a day when you want to buy or sell something. And I would just like the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Is it alright if I stay in touch with you via email? Once you get this far in the conversation, you know, it, what, it, what it does is, is it, it makes them commit to you as their agent when they get ready to do something. Okay, you get their email address, you put them on your list, and then after you get the email address, you drop another bomb on them and ask them to lunch. Because once you go that far, you know, they, they like you, and you're gonna you're gonna close this deal. So we're gonna say, 
well, look, you're going to be down. When's the next time you're going to be down? Or are you, you know, are you going to be around for lunch in the next couple of days or something like that? Because I'd love to hang out and us get to know each other since we're going to be doing business later. Right. And then you get the one on one time with them at lunch. Right. And the relationship is built on such a high level um, that nobody can really compete with that. Once you do all that, you know, you get the email address, you start sending them stuff, you have the lunch with them. Um, there's really, they don't really have a choice to use another realtor, right? If you do what you're supposed to do and stay in touch with them. So I got a question here. Okay, no, this is Noel answering a question for another guy. So yeah, guys, um, I guess I'll end this since I don't have any more questions, but, uh, um, I just want to say, you know, that, um, you have to have a passion for this. If you're going to be successful, um, if you don't have a passion for helping people and wanting to succeed in real estate, it's not going to work. 80% of realtors fail in their first year. You know, that's a huge hurdle to overcome if you're new in the business. Um, eight out of 10 agents do not make it through their first year, right? So you're already trying to like, you know, defy the odds to even survive. So, um, you know, if you don't have a passion for it and you don't, you're not trying to get better and better every day, week, month, year, then you're not going to be part of the 20% that survives. Okay. So, you know, just keep, keep working to learn more and to, to build. I hope something I said today uh, helps you. Um, if you're watching this uh, afterwards, you know, feel free to uh, message me any questions that you might have. Um, let's see, Noel's asking me, please tell us your typical day schedule from calling research appointments. Okay, it's, 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 uh, it's different every day. Um, I have a schedule book right here that I keep all my stuff in, what I'm supposed to be thinking about, what I'm doing, my goals, all that stuff. So um, I work out at 7 o'clock in the morning for an hour. I get back home at 8, I take a shower, I'm to the office by 9, okay? Once I get here, I start checking my emails and, and make a list. I take about 15 minutes, I make a list of everything I need to think about for the rest of the day, what my appointments are, deals I have going on, and uh, my goals, right? And sometimes I, sometimes I say, uh, sometimes I put on there like my, my, my life goals, you know, like I want to have $10 million net worth. Um... Okay, so I take 15 minutes, I check my email, and I, I go through all my notes that I need to be thinking about, and I make my list. Once I make my list, then I'm just, I'm on it as far as completing everything on that list for the day. I know where I gotta be, when I gotta be there, and what I'm thinking about. So, um, if it's a day where I am gonna make calls, I lost you guys for a second. If it's a day where I am gonna make calls, you know, I may start at nine o'clock, I may do them till lunch, Okay, I may do them the whole day, um, or I may have an appointment in the morning. I may start calls after lunch and do them the rest of the day. So it, it's really, you know, day to day, it, I don't really have a set schedule of stuff I do. It's just whatever's the most productive. Um, whatever's the most productive thing for me to do based on everything I have going on, that's what I'm going to focus on. I prioritize the things that are going to make me the most money and help the most people. And that, that's, how I, that's how I schedule my day. Hey Tony, what's up? Yeah, yeah, the lunch thing is is really cool. It uh, it, it solidifies the whole deal um, when you when you go through that whole phone script. Um, real quick, guys, before I get out of here, unless I get any more questions, now, on the phone script. Okay, this is where agents mess up on the phone script. They 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 start out the call nervous. Okay. Um, which shouldn't happen anyway because you, you should practice your script so, so much that you're not nervous. But anyway, or, or you don't have the right scripts maybe. You don't know what to say in certain situations. Okay, so when, you, when you're talking to the people and you get to the point where you ask them if they want to buy or sell or if there's anything you can do for them, they say no. I don't think I lost you guys for a second. I'm going to go right here. If uh, when they say no, we're not interested in selling or 
uh, we, uh, we're not, we're, there's nothing you can do for us at the time. That's the point right there that most agents don't know what to do. And there's this awkward point in the conversation. Okay. And this is the point where you guys should shine. Okay. This is the point where you say, uh, when they say, no, nah, there's nothing you can do for us and stuff. You say, okay, well, that's fine. Well, look, is there an agent down here that you work with? Right. You, you, you get ready to out, you get ready. You know, the awkward points coming in the conversation and you're ready for it. You know, it's coming and you know what you're going to say uh, when it comes. So therefore, you're more confident through the whole call. You start out the call confident because you know what you're going to say. You know, the awkward point in the conversation is coming and you know what you're going to say when that awkward point comes. Right. And then you finish out the call. Like I said, you know, is there an agent down here that you work with? Um, you know, if they say, yeah, and they say a name, you can tell it's a great relationship. You say, that's a great agent. You're in good hands. And then you might still try to get their email address. You know, hey, can I stay in touch with you via email? I'd like to still stay in touch with you if that's all right. But most of the time, you'll just let them go because they're married to another agent. But most of the time, they're going to say, we don't have an agent. And you're going to say that you would love to work with them when the day comes that they want to buy or sell something. Um, is it okay if we stay in touch via email? And when they give you the email address, then you ask for the lunch appointment, right? So I hope that guy, that helps you guys. Um, I want you guys to uh, to like my page if you would. It's called Zero to Diamond. Um, it, it, I, I created it um, a couple weeks ago. I've been posting stuff on there, and I really want to help other agents succeed. Um, so. I have a desire to, to help people, you know, uh, that's why I succeed so well in real estate. I want to help people, right? If you want to see how, how big you can blow up, find out how many people you can help, right? Um, so anyway, Zero to Diamond, um, you know, subscribe to my channel on YouTube, Ricky Carruth. Um, you know, got Twitter, Facebook, um, Snapchat, at Ricky Carruth. Um, all that stuff. I'm posting stuff for agents, um, you know, to hopefully help them. Message me. Get in touch with me however you can get in touch with me because I'm here to help. I want to see everybody succeed at the highest level to your highest potential. And um, if anybody doesn't have any more questions, I'm going to call it a day. But I appreciate you guys. This was real fun. I look forward to doing this some more. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Get out there and sell some property. Quit watching Facebook.